Hey guys, it's me with the gimbal hanging out. We're gonna have to do things a little differently on this video because Chase has got a full-time job, well, practically full-time job, and so he is off at work and I'm gonna have to record all on my own. So bear with me. Uh, we've got a pot of cheddar going on today. Um, also, Got a lot of stuff going on with the goats today. It's that time of year. And let me see if I can flip this around. Is this it? Ooh, I don't know how to flip it. Oh, we'll just have to go this way. Here we go. Um, oops, go down. We got some of our babies in heat today. So it's uh, kind of crazy going on. I'm trying to deal with all this in between. I don't know if we can get him on there. We've done a cheddar video before, and I think we just did the stirred curd cheddar, and people are always interested in um, how to do like a traditional cheddaring style cheddar. So it's been a while since I've done one of those, but after doing the, um, the derby, uh, derby, apparently I've got to say that with, a, with an English accent, um, derby. Um, but they had like a cheddaring kind of process in that. So I decided let's do a traditional cheddar uh, and see how it turns out. Now, I'm not sure if we're gonna get this video out uh, now and then do a follow-up to see how it turns out. I always like to see how things turn out for you um, so I can bring you, uh, bring you a really good finished product. Um, so I might release this now and we'll do a follow-up later or maybe we will, I don't know, maybe we'll just hang on to this cheese for six months and hang on to this footage for six months. So. Uh, depending on the end of the video or the beginning of the video if it's winter <laughs> or next spring um, or if it's now we'll figure it out anyway say hi Catelyn all right so that said here's some more girls coming down uh, I'm gonna go back into the house and here's image hi image um, I'm gonna go back into the house and get this cheese started. I've sterilized our pot using some uh, boiling water in there and all of our equipment. First thing we need to do is bring our milk to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm using fresh milk, so it's probably around 100 degrees because I just milked it this morning. So I'm going to add enough cold milk from yesterday and then bring it to 86 degrees. Um, the recipe is calling for six gallons. This is a five gallon pot and I don't want to get out our six gallon pot. So we're going to use um, five gallons of milk total. Now that we're at 86 degrees, I'm going to add the culture. I'm, I'm going to use the MM100 culture and I'm only going to use about an eighth of a teaspoon of this for my five gallons of milk. Um, I just know my milk acidifies very quickly. So that's plenty. Let that rehydrate on the top for a couple of minutes and we'll stir it in. Use your ladle to stir that in. And once we've done that, you're going to put a lid on it and let it sit to ripen for 90 minutes. It's a good thing it's ripening for 90 minutes because I've got a lot to do. I need to go out there and get those doughs taken care of. Now it's time to add the rennet to this. I'm gonna use animal rennet. Um, I'm not sure I mentioned it before, but we're using the recipe in cheesemaking.com and I'll put a link for that down below. Um, so I'm gonna use their animal rennet. For my five gallon batch, I'm gonna use about half a teaspoon. Um, I'm finding I'm getting better results with my goat milk with a little less rennet than things are calling for. Um, so half a teaspoon of this, I'm gonna mix up with some water. So I have about, oops, about a quarter cup of water in my bowl. I'm gonna put my half a teaspoon, it's a quarter teaspoon measure. Uh, so I'll use two of those. Um, now let me point out, if you want to color your cheese, I'm just going to do a white cheddar here, but if you wanted to color your cheese, you would add your annatto at this stage before you added the rennet. Um, and I think I just want a white cheddar, so we're going to go with it. 
Now the annatto you would mix with water the same way that you mix the rennet, stir it in and then add the rennet. Now mix this up real well. You're gonna maintain the temperature of 86 degrees and we're gonna let this coagulate for 45 minutes. As you can see here, we've got a nice firm set. You've got a little layer of whey on the top, it's starting to crack a little bit. You can pull it away from the sides. Uh, it's time to cut these curds. We wanna cut these into half inch pieces. So first I'm gonna use my, my cheese heart. And these are half inch strings on this. I just got this on Etsy. They had a few different sellers on there that we're making them. So cut that that way. Get the thermometer out of here. And now we'll do the vertical cut. Once you've got that done, just let it sit for five minutes to heal up and firm up a little bit. Um, then we're gonna go on and continue to break these down into our half inch pieces and stir for five to 10 minutes, maintaining our 86 degree temperature. This initial stir you wanna do very, very gently because these curds are still real soft. Um, I'm just gonna get another knife and break them up as I slowly stir this for 10 or 15 minutes. We'll check in with you when I get it broken up and we're ready to start heating. Next, we're gonna pop the heat on and we want to raise the temperature on these up to 102 degrees, taking 30 minutes to do it. Uh, you can see just having stirred gently for about 10, 15 minutes, how our curds have shrunk down already. So I'm gonna to continue to stir this the whole time and break up any big ones that I find uh, as I get this to 102 degrees. Got this up to 102 degrees now. And let me show you what we're dealing with with these curds. You see how much they've shrunk down? Um, but in the middle, they're still kind of juicy. You can feel that they've got like a custardy center uh, and they're firmer on the outside. And what we're aiming to do is have them be the same consistency all the way through. Um, so this is gonna require stirring for another 30 to 60 minutes to dry out these curds. Uh, now the drier you get them, the longer the cheese is gonna take to age. And I'm aiming for about a six month aging on this. So I'm not gonna get them super dry, but we'll, we'll shoot for about 40, 45 minutes, see where we're at and then come back. So that's a whole lot of stirring and it's time for me to find an audio book and put something in to entertain myself while I do this. And uh, we'll check back in when I've got these stirred down some. Oh boy, am I tired of stirring. Oh my goodness. I remember why I don't make cheddar a lot. Okay, I have stirred this for about 45 minutes now and I think I'm about ready to quit. Um, if you can see all these curds, they're all cooked down. They are, this one's a little juicy in the middle still, but most of them are and the nice firm texture all the way through. Um, so at this point, I'm gonna let this sink down under the whey for about five minutes while I prepare um, a colander with a cheesecloth. We're going to pour the whey off of it and get all these curds out of here next. While I let this sit for five minutes, I'm, I'm gonna get my cheese press out and prepared. Got most of the whey poured off for my piggies. I'm gonna take the rest this way and these curds and get them down into this colander. Sorry, the sunlight is so bright in the sink here. The sun's getting low this time of year, it's September. Okay, I'm gonna take our curd mass here now, and we're gonna start the cheddaring process. At this point, more acid is going to be developed in the cheese and the whey is going to be expelled. So I'm gonna take, wrap that up in there, take the whole colander because I don't want it sitting in the whey, and set that back down into my pot. 
Now, I want to maintain the temperature about 90 degrees in there so that we can continue to let our cultures work. Um, so let me stick my thermometer down in here. And we can always add a, um, a pot full of 90 degree water on top if the temperature starts to drop. So let's see. It's showing it's like 84. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that pot of warm water over the top to keep it about 90 in there. Now I'm not looking to press the curds here, so I'm gonna rest this pot on the colander so it's not on the curd mass. So I'm not trying to press and put any weight on this, just to keep the temperature up. There we go. Uh, we'll come back and we'll flip it in 30 minutes. Take this pot out of here. It's been 30 minutes. And what I want to do is flip our curd mass. I don't know where you can see here. I need chase. Um, I'm going to flip this in the cheesecloth, and this time I'm, I want to put it all the way down the bottom of the pot. Um, so I need to get this colander out and pour the whey out of the bottom of the pot. I just didn't want it sitting in the whey earlier, but we're going to need it kind of flattened out for the next step. So let's take this Put it down there temporarily. in here and see where we're holding. Our curd mass is still at 98 degrees, so I think we're fine without the water. I'm just going to put the um, put the lid on there and come back in another 30 minutes. Okay, we need to let this thing cheddar another hour to two hours. Um, at this point, I can smell that it's starting to develop some acid and change from that sweet milky smell to start starting to get a, a little bit of a cheesy smell. Um, I'm gonna cut the cheese mass in half this time. Let me see if I can get where you can see me. Hopefully you can here. So what we want to do is start elongating the curd structure. So I'm just gonna cut this in half Try not to dump it in the sink. Okay, I'm gonna stack the halves on top of each other. Here's our curd starting. So the direction said to leave the cheesecloth in between. I've never done that before, but we'll give it a try. So I'm gonna put the cheesecloth in between the pieces like this, put it back down into the pot. I'm gonna put the cloth over the top one as well. And this time I do want to put a little bit of weight on it and maintain that temperature. So let me get the water a little warmer in this. It's 86 degrees. Let's get this up to 90. And I want to put about five to eight pounds of pressure on here. So let's fill that up here. Stick that on top of my curd mass, and we're gonna let that sit another half hour and come back and check it and flip it again. I'm really tired of making cheese right now. Oh, hopefully this is ready to go. I think it's gonna need one more flip. So let's see what we got going on. Here's uh, one of our slabs. Oh, hush up. And it doesn't smell quite acid enough yet. So here's our other slab. I'm just gonna flip them. Wrap them back up. Let's see, this one was on the top, so we'll put it on the bottom, put our weight back on. I'm gonna give it another half hour. This has been going for about two and a half hours now, and I might could give it a little more time, but I'm tired of making cheese. So you see, it's like mozzarella has developed a, an elongated curd structure, um, kind of a shiny, uh, shiny 
outside to the curd. I'm calling this good enough. I'm gonna break it up into um, about hazelnut size pieces like this, and you could cut it up, but I like to have the irregular edges to it. I feel like it makes it press a little better for those little parts to go in there. And then we're gonna salt it. Now the salting is going to help um, stop the acidifying at this point. If we just go and press it and then try to brine it later, it will continue to acidify as we're pressing it. And since we've given it all this time to create acid as we're cheddaring, uh, we want to halt that now so it doesn't get too acid. You can really see that curd structure on this one. Okay, so I pre-weighed my bowl, it's time to salt this, and you want 2% the weight of the curd in salt. Now my bowl weighed a pound and two ounces, so the curd here is going to weigh three pounds. Come on, it's kind of changed on me. Okay, there we go. Three pounds, 13 ounces. Uh, let me figure out what 2% pound, two of that is. All right, that ended up just shy of one and a quarter ounces of salt. So let me get my kosher salt out. All right, here we go. And I'm gonna put half of it in. Mix it up and then put the other half in. It's already starting to stick together, these curds in the bottom here. So mix that up until all the salt is dissolved in and then add the other half. Then it's time to press. Okay, I'm just gonna use my medium cheese mold. Let me grab a plate to put under that or else I'm gonna have way all over the counter. And let me just check my camera, make sure. Gotta make sure you can see what I'm doing. All righty. So then just begin filling our mold with your curds and press them down real well in there. Now just fold the cloth over the top. Smooth it out best you can and put your follower on. And we're gonna go put this in the cheese press. Give me a second to move the camera. All right, here we go. Now, as with all cheddars, um, we are going to, or this style cheese, uh, we're gonna start with a lower weight and then gradually add the weight um, so that we don't end up with holes on the inside. So we get a nice firm curd all the way through. So I'm gonna start on 15 pounds for an hour and then I'll raise that up and we'll flip it and raise the weight up to 20 pounds. So. I'll see you in about an hour when this consolidates. It's 7 p.m. and I'm still making cheese. So I'm gonna show you this flip and then I'll give you the instructions for flipping it a couple of more times before bed. Um, and we'll check in in the morning. So this has been an hour, about 15 pounds. on top I didn't quite have the cloths 
smoothly, but as you get to the bottom, you can see how well it's starting to knit. So we're going to flip this. <clears throat> this time we can smooth this cloth out even better. Put it back in. I just drip that all over the floor. Good one, Kristen. All right, put that back in. Let's smooth it out. Okay, we're gonna put this back in at 20 pounds for two hours. After that, I'm gonna take it back out. I'm gonna flip it again. I'm gonna put it in at 30 pounds for another two hours, and then it's gonna be bedtime. So I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna slap as much weight as I can get on here, at least 50 pounds. Um, you just really can't overpress a cheddar. We want this to knit. I'm gonna leave it on there overnight and we'll check in in the morning. This has been in here overnight and I wanna press it for 24 hours total. Um, so I'm just gonna uh, check it out and then flip it and put it back in again until this evening. But I wanna see how it's knitting up. And I want to make sure that the cheesecloth doesn't stick, because if you leave the cheesecloth too long, it has a tendency to do that. Okay, I hope you can see this well. Um, you can still see some of the lines where the curds are pushed together, but it's got a solid skin to it. I do find that sometimes if you don't press it enough, that as it dries, those curds will start to come apart. So we're just gonna put it back in here and let it go till about 7 p.m. tonight. Well, I didn't get back to you guys yesterday. Uh, so this has been sitting out and drying for a day, which actually worked out pretty good um, because you can see the certain little places where as it's drying, it's wanting to crack uh, just a little bit. Um, so it tells me I either needed more weight to press it, which is really hard to get on my press, or I need to leave these curds just a little, uh, a little less dry uh, so that they would knit together better. But it's not cracking so badly that the wax won't fill in, uh, fill in the cracks and it should still be a delicious cheese. It feels nice and elastic in there and I'm quite pleased with it. So we're gonna let this age about six months and then we'll get with you with a follow-up video and see how it turned out fingers crossed. So as always, please take the time to share this video with your friends and subscribe. Thank you. See you soon.